And the last thing right that I want to talk about is actually what is called what is called a dense sort of a reconstruction okay 3D uh, reconstruction. If you see uh, right I mean so the, so, the, so the job of the bundle adjustment is, is to only return to you the camera poses which are actually more accurate okay that is all it does. It gives you more uh, so the bundle adjustment right gives you gives you accurate accurate camera poses accurate to the to the to the extent possible it does not mean this is all 0 error and all. So, you have the camera poses with you and you have if you have n camera poses you have n views right. Now, you want to do a do a kind of a dense reconstruction because you saw that in bundler you had only a few feature correspondences you cannot use that as actually a 3D depth map now. Now, there is there is actually a smart idea what is called plane sweep stereo and and and, and I like this because this is one thing that actually fuses homography which we did uh, earlier which was for actually 2D scenes and so on and and actually a 3D okay. So, this is like this is nice and then so, so the idea is as follows right I will just, just tell you what the idea is the equations are easy to follow. So, the idea is like this I mean I have I have my, my views right this is coming from let us say a, you know a bundle adjustment I have these these poses and, and let us say right, I fix my camera to be reference to reference camera to be this then this is my first camera then let us say 3 and so on okay those are my other cameras which means that I know my R 1 T 1 right I know my R 2 T 2 everything of course right with respect to my to my say reference. Now, what is done is as follows right now you have you have a 3D scene here right whose kind of a you know a dense reconstruction you want that means what dense reconstruction actually means that for every pixel in this image I want to assign a depth value that is what it means or I need x y z for every point and not for just some sparse points and all right that is what that is what we mean by a dense 3D reconstruction that means I want to find out what exactly is a 3D point in the scene for every point point on my on my image plane okay. Now, the way this works is right think about uh, so for example right. So, if you if you did did a bundle adjustment and uh, and other thing that you also get is the get is you see 3D points right you get that information also for those sparse. I mean the, from that right you can get a rough estimate about what is the maximum depth depth and what is the what is this what is the see near and far points right some rough idea you will have you can of course you know you can you can maybe make it a little larger provide a little bit of allowance. But you will have something like like you see d far and d near right what that means is the the farthest point and then probably right a nearest point I mean in your you see 3D scene you have let us say some some sort of an uh, right estimate about that. Then what you can do is you can actually divide this guy into 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 n number of planes uh, okay these are the parallel planes imagine that that you have got parallel planes and these are all parallel parallel to this plane to this image plane with respect to that means with respect to the first camera okay. So, the first camera is looking this way then I am looking at slicing the I mean 3D scene right with with let us say whatever depending upon how much accuracy you want right I can have let us say right 20 planes coming in between d far and d near or I can have 50 planes coming in between d far and near but then you can figure out that you cannot you cannot have it too fine because you will not actually gain anything if you make it too fine. Why? What will happen if you make it too fine? Anyway, I will leave it to you. Okay, so you can't make it too fine either. Okay, so let's say right, you have we have kind of quantized your C three D scene, right? And here is a camera, my first camera. Okay, and then right, it looks at the first, and then these are all kind of virtual planes, right? They don't exist in the real in reality. They're just virtual planes that I'm actually looking at. Now, now the homography, right? As we know, homography is what. Uh, so, for example, right? I mean, if I if I know that if I know that right, I have a I have a planar scene in front of me, a, a homography okay, will allow me to transform, okay, the image that I have here, okay, which I'm assuming is of this plane, which in reality is not. It is of the whole 3D. But for the time being, if I assume that whatever I am seeing here, if I were to use the use a plane equation, right, of this plane, and of course I have my camera pose, and if I if I apply a homography so as to be able to go to my next camera. So, that I synthesize a view as to what this image would look like if it was seeing a plane right at that at that you see depth whatever right if you start with the nearest it will be like d near. So, if a d near if you think of a plane a fronto parallel plane and if you actually warp this view such that it generates or synthesize synthesizes this the view with respect to camera 1 and then I can do synthesize with respect to camera 2 what is that equation that that is a homography I think I wrote it down once but but I did not show it actually but that is a homography right so if you let me just write down the standard notation right for that homography we write it as h uh, 
okay h pi p l okay in this case I mean, that is why let us be uh, let us be clear about what we mean. So, k l r l plus okay minus t l n p transpose by d p the whole into k reference inverse. Okay, now, what is the L and P are L is the Lth pose and P is the Pth plane. Okay, so, what this means is if you fix a plane, let us say that you fix the plane, then given the reference view, you can synthesize the scene as seen by let us say a camera which is L, which is the Lth camera, which is the Lth pose. So, the Lth camera has its own intrinsics, let us say. Typically, it may be the same camera, and then and then you have the pose with you, which is RL, and then you have a TL, and this NP, right? Because it's a frontoparallel plane with respect to the first camera, NP is easy. NP is simply easy, simply zero zero one. It's a frontoparallel camera. So the idea is like this, right? So so it's interesting to see, right? What will happen if you actually do this? Now, if you if actually if in the if in the three D scene, if there were points, right, at that depth, if there were points at that depth, then what will happen? When you warp it, right, and then and then you see it in the second scene. So if you stack up all these, so see it's like this, right? I have a bunch of observations that that I already have with me. These are not synthesized. These are my original images. These are my views that I have. Now I am taking my say reference view, okay, of the scene, and I'm actually I'm actually applying uh, see homography, right? Whatever h pi, what is this? Uh, h pi p one, okay, with respect to one plane. Then I have h pi p two, all the way, and each one will synthesize a view. Okay, all the way up to whatever, right? I mean, so I have what is you know whatever, right? I mean, m number of views, right? So l going from so I have like h pi p m. So I have m number of views. So I have synthesized. Now, what do you think will happen if I compare these two images? Okay, so if you if you compare compare these two images, then if a point was actually at that depth right then then when then when you warp it right when you warp the reference view this will exactly match at that location with the with the observation do you do you see this if it if it actually obeys the homography that means you have something at that depth dp okay now yeah right dp is dp is you see depth depth of the plane depth of the plane which means which means a perpendicular distance from the from the center of the camera this is this is the perpendicular distance or in, in this case it is it's a frontal parallel camera so really there's nothing perpendicular distance of the of the plane from the camera from the camera center which is also our depth so what it is saying is if there was a point there then because of the fact that it is actually at that point and because you are you are actually because that point is lying on that plane a planar homography applied on that point will take you exactly where it ought to be as seen from the second view, as seen from the third view, and so on. Therefore, right, if you check for a photo consistency of this, right, then what will happen is what was so what did I do? So I mean, oh okay, no, wait a minute, right? Okay, yeah, I, I changed. I, I mean, I, so I changed only the view, right? So what will happen is in the same view because because right, what the the point is because it's a planar homography, you will find consistency across all the frames, literally. Because everywhere, everywhere to map like that, unless of course you know you can't see it. In which case you won't be able to map it. Oh, that's why that's why it's called a it's called a winner take all strategy. That means that if you compare this intensity with this, typically you'll take a small region, not just one value. You'll find that wherever there is photo consistency, right? You'll get a lot of lot of close intensities there, and that basically means that that point is at actually depth dp. That is why it's able to obey this. Any other point, right? I mean, so for example, right? I mean, if my plane was here and this point was here, think about a point here, okay, which will also be acted upon by this, right? But that's at a at a kind of a different depth. So that should ideally have been applied this homography, which is at let's say dp whatever, right? D1 or dt d3 or something. But I am applying this planar homography on that. That has a depth which is not the same as this depth. Therefore, when you apply the homography, it won't match. So so some other point here, which is which is this point. Which is at actually a different depth. If you if you if you warp it, okay, some other point here. When you warp it, let's say it came here. If you try to compare the location here at the same location, these intensities won't match because that is not coming from that depth. That is coming from 
from a different depth. That means, this d p should have been different there for the same r and t for the same u. See, I am seeing it from here my r i r 1 and t 1 are fixed, but but the depth is not is not right and, and I do not know the depth. So, the only way to check is I will warp it and after warping I will compare right. If there is a consistency I know that okay, that is that is a correct depth all others will not match that is okay, but then for that point I found the depth then I kind of repeat it repeat it for all the planes. So, so what will happen when I when I actually come to come to this plane and I warp that that guy will will come and correctly fall that means it would not it would not come here it will go somewhere else that is where this point will be is this clear this is called plane sweep right because you have a you have you are sweeping a bunch of planes across and and you are uh, and you are actually right, try to check for a photo consistency loss and based on the photo consistency loss now for every pixel now we can assign a depth value right because you know that d1 is for this guy d3 is for that guy d5 is for that guy so so you can so you can imagine that imagine that right for the whole grid you have values now and 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 you know and the point is even if something is not visible it's okay what you that's why we say winner takes all we don't we don't expect it to match in every view we look at at least you know a good number of views it can also happen that right something may have let's say you know uh, five five sort of photo consistent uh, views okay for one depth and then maybe right uh, no seven consistent views for another depth right in which case in which case in which case we'll take the one which is probably seven whichever is higher it can also happen right because if the the depths are very close right so the so if your sectioning is very close then it can happen that right you get kind of you know two depths but whichever gives you the maximum consistency you go with that and this is how you do actually a dense 3d this one reconstruction okay and this does not require require a rectified arrangement at all right I did not try to rectify I have R and T I have got cameras arbitrarily placed it does not matter right I do not need rectification I can directly you can rectify and do it if you want, but it does not require that. So, that is why plane sweep studio is actually a nice way to just a homography it is all just a homography principle that is used to sort of to sort of figure out uh, you know mm, the you know, right, depth value for 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 every for every point. I okay, will stop here ok. So, next class right I mean I want to so with this right the traditional uh, you know this one ok structure SFM and all is over ok geometry just that I want to say discuss a few deep network works ok next class and then and then we go to mid level and high level those are smaller topics related relatively.